Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. Ha ha. Hi. Ha ha. It's my fuckboy laugh. I've been working on it. Yeah. Like good I've, one. Thank you. I've literally been working on that laugh. It's good. Ha 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 ha. I don't think that's fuckboy at all. <laughs> what? It, that doesn't sound a little like that doesn't resemble fuckboy at least a little bit. No. What? What it is it? What's awful. a fuckboy laugh? I don't think there is a fuckboy laugh. Fuck boy oh, there's totally like, a fuckboy no, laugh. They just ignore you. That's kind of what a fuckboy does. So that's what a fuckboy is to you? Yeah. Just somebody who ignores you? Just a jerk, I guess. Okay. I kind of see that more with, like, what a douchebag would be. Yeah, I guess so. Do you think douchebag and fuckboy are synonymous? Because I don't see them as synonymous. I mean, I think they go hand in hand. You can't really be a fuckboy without kind of being a douchebag. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah. You gotta have a little douche in you to be a fuckboy. Yeah, I agree. I feel like a fuckboy to me is, and it's probably different from like a male perspective versus a female perspective. Yeah. But I feel like what a fuckboy to me would be somebody who like doesn't hold opinions of their own. They live for partying. Like, partying's not just, like, a part of their life. It's, like, their life. Like, whatever they have to do in life, plus partying is, like, their life. That's a, their existence. Okay. And they don't they don't have very many opinions of their own. They kind of go with the crowd. That's true. That's I don't know fair. if that's what a fuckboy is to most people, but... I mean, I think they're more of, like, a crowd pleaser. Like, they don't... I agree with, like, not having their own opinions because i think they're just do being a fuck boy to get attention yeah 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 the attention variables everything <laughs> definitely i don't think anyone's a fuck boy just because they want to be an asshole you know i know a lot of people think like fuck boy resembles being like the player type yeah i heard somebody some girl describe fuck boy as Somebody who is going to string women on emotionally, but like they'll never emotionally commit or something like that. Like it was like a, it was a very like psychological description of what they they thought a fuckboy was. Because it's kind of a loose term. There's a high level That's of ambiguity true. to like fuckboy per se. Yeah, everyone can perceive it differently. I guess. I don't know. To me, a fuckboy is just someone that doesn't commit. And they go around just doing their thing, I guess. I don't know. Just doing their thing? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to explain a fuckboy, I guess. You just know it when you see one, I guess. <laughs> was it, was it, okay, that was my actual laugh right there. Was, <laughs> is that a fuckboy laugh? No, it's no. nice. It's a nice laugh. It's a delightful laugh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like if you could get a ringtone, would you possibly have my laugh as your ringtone? No. It, it's not that good? No. Okay. Not good enough for ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not long enough for ringtone. That's a good point. It's yeah. Everybody's just, it's like, just like, who like is chuckle. that laughing? Yeah, it's just a chuckle. It's not anything, like, progressive. I feel like I have different versions of laugh, <laughs> though. I feel like everybody has a different version of a laugh. Like, whenever something's kind of funny, that's kind of my laugh. And then if something's super funny, I'll get, like, this high-pitched, like, hyena sound. Be like, ha! Like a... You don't have, like, a smoker's cough, like... No, I, I never cough. Oh, I can cough when I laugh too hard. Just, like, shortness of breath? <laughs> yeah. So you're, like, laughing and coughing at the same time? Yeah, it's awful. If it's really funny. I feel like that's going to result in you, like, crying a little bit, too. I feel like there would be tears involved with that. That's happened, yeah. Have you ever, So you've laughed so hard that you've cried? Yeah. Have you not? I I think maybe this one time... This one time, I'll never forget this moment in high school, but I don't even know what it was. Just me and three friends were out at Jack of the Box getting food, and we're all just sitting there dying laughing. And I've done, like, some pretty intense ab workouts, and my stomach has never felt so sore. Oh, my God. Like, my stomach was killing me. We were laughing so hard. Yeah. 
I've it was had those. it was just a beautiful moment because we were we were just together. Just I have not laughed that hard in my entire life. That was probably the hardest laugh I've ever had. It was just four of us just joking about one thing, and then the next thing became funnier, and then we would say something else which became funnier. And then we're laughing for no reason. Then we're laughing yeah. at the fact that we're laughing <laughs> so hard in this public establishment. Yeah. Like falling over. And then somebody else would do something like drastic because they're laughing so hard. Like they might be like laughing and then be like, <gasps> and then everybody's <laughs>, laughs at like that, like their shortness of breath. And they're like, oh, this is, this is too good. Yeah. It was like the most contagious laughter I've ever experienced. Yeah. I don't know if I've had that experience yet. Sounds fun though. I saw a Twitter post one time, which I actually deleted my Twitter, my personal one recently, and um, they, uh, <laughs> it was like these two guys hanging out, and they just, they're just like dying laughing, and then they do something, and they point at it yeah. in the room, and then they laugh even harder, and then they like, they're giving each other high fives, like falling, falling laughing, and the caption was something like, if you've, if you've ever had this moment, or this is like the greatest moment you can have with a friend, or something like that, and that's so true just laughing yeah that's true like just you guys ah uh, because you think laughter. like you're looking back at like laughing with your friends like it's a memory absolutely and, like makes you happy it's just it's so funny how it just it, it can like become so contagious yeah happiness is contagious is sadness contagious I don't know. I mean, if you're already sad, I feel like if someone else is sad, like it can bring out what you're like hiding, I guess. Okay. I don't think someone can just be sad and then make someone else happy sad. See, I don't, I don't know if I agree with happiness being contagious because like, yeah, I feel like whenever people are in a state of suffering and a state of loss or trauma or, or just being a negative person, yeah, it's really difficult to become aware of the beauties in the world whenever you're in in a state of suffering yeah that's true i'm not saying it's not possible i think it's an art i think i think that's like a real talent to a human being like i think that's like a superpower almost if you're like in a really bad place and you're able to still see beauty in the world and not just look at everything as like ugly and gross and terrible and malevolent like it's that's kind of a superpower in a way yeah I think that just being a positive person, like, you can change people's day really easily. Just like if they're having a crappy day, if you're being a crappy person, then they're going to have a crappier day. But if you're a positive person or a happy person, then you never know, like, what their day can go like after that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's kind of cool, those little small encounters, too. Yeah. The little yeah. ones that you, you like. And you've probably been on both ends of them, but whenever yeah. you're on the receiving end and you're like, wow, that, that subtle little thing that that person did, they probably saw it as so not, or they saw it as so trivial. Yeah. But like, to me, it was like, some, it was memorable. Like it was something yeah. I'm thinking about later. Yeah, I agree. It's a beautiful moment. <laughs> We've yeah. all had it. We've all been there. Yeah. It, yeah. And I agree with your logic there. Cause I feel like whenever I'm, uh, whenever that happens to me. It kind of uh, plays upon my desire to reciprocate that as I navigate throughout life. Yeah. Like I'm like, hey, I remember how that person made me feel the other day. Let's kind of try to keep the ball rolling on that and yeah. let me be an example of that as well. Yeah, I agree. Or if like someone made you feel crappy, then being positive instead because you know how like you felt when they made you have a crappier day than you were having so true you turn it around on them goes both ways yeah just like me <laughs> <laughs> that's awful <laughs> no but um how was i gonna say what if what if human beings were just like super like 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 emotions were just extremely contagious like, what if we were just, like, 100% receptive to somebody else and how they're feeling? We're just, our emotions are just fluctuating at, like, drastic levels all throughout the day, completely dependent upon who we're hanging around. That sounds awful. You couldn't do things that we're dealing with a lot of people on a daily basis. Like, yeah. I'm working a serving job right now. There's no way I could do that if I if that was, like, how humans were programmed. Yeah. 
it's like you go to one table, they're super positive. You're like, oh, let's go, let's go. You walk to the next fucking table, and then they're just like in a super negative state, and then yeah. you walk away with that. You're like pissed off at me. <laughs> I mean, I go through the same thing with donors all the time. Really? Oh yeah, like I'll have one that's like with donors. Yeah. Like blood do- or uh, plasma donors, right? Yeah. Because you stick people with needles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like I'll have one person that's like totally cool and like i mean a lot of people get anxious obviously like donating plasma but like i'll have someone that like does it all the time and they're fine and then someone that does it all the time but they like still jump at like the needle and they're like anxious and worried and then i have some people that are just pissed off when they come in so i get every angle of everything if you're in a pissed off mood do you stick people harder no shove it in their (laughs) arm i don't i mean I don't know. I try my best to not hurt anybody, but you know, you're going to hurt people no matter if you try hard. So, I feel like females are good with if you're dealing with somebody who's really crabby, <laughs> with dealing with them with a perfect smile, but then yeah. as soon as they leave and you turn to your coworker, or you turn to whoever's <laughs> around, you're like, "Oh my god, that they person was horrible. the worst." Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't done that before, but I don't do it often unless they're really crappy. Okay. I'll do it more. Girls are good at that. No. You're all fake. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, my gosh. I'm just no kidding. No, we're not. I'm not a misogynist. <laughs> yeah. Are you a, what, the men equivalent of a misogynist? Do you hate all men? No. Are all men assholes? No. Some men are ass- assholes, but not all of them. True. But some women are assholes, but not all of them. There needs to be like a fuckboy equivalent for for uh, females. <laughs> for girls. <laughs> yeah, I mean. What would that even be? I mean, I think girls already get enough hate sometimes for, like, I don't know, like, think of it this way. Like, if a guy sleeps with three people, like, it's like, go you. And then if a girl does, it's like. She's a slut. So, you know. The double standard's real. Yeah, exactly. I think that's because this is my, this is, to my understanding, this is what I would hypothesize. Okay. Is that I think in more like tribal days, like hunter gatherer times, if a guy has to carry, go, go and get resources for that female and she's giving it up like very easily then that's like the worst thing ever is if he's going to provide resources for her and the offspring if that's not his offspring then he's doing that to provide for another man's offspring yeah so women are incentivized to be more choosy maters but men are we're kind of uh the most like replaceable sex so we're going to be I don't know, like, we're going to try to spread our seed as much as possible <laughs> to guarantee the success of passing on our genetics. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I don't know. Guys will go around and spread their seeds everywhere if they could. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> they will, won't they? Oh, wow. I just tried to drink <laughs> this with the cap on. That is ate up. It's okay. I spilled my water. Wait, do you know what ate up means? No. Eight up? You've never heard that expression? I don't think so. It's a St. Louis thing. I didn't realize it was a St. Louis thing until I've said it in front of people outside of St. Louis. What's it mean? It's a really difficult thing to explain. It Eight up basically means, uh, how would I even describe it? A good, like, I don't know, like some if somebody's kind of like a barhead, like they do a lot of Xanax, or if they're like kind of like a stoner and kind of ditzy, like in, in that way. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, if you're describing a person, this is yeah. kind of how it'd be like, this is like the archetypical like example or definition of eight up. It'd be somebody like that, that they're just like, ha ha. Yeah, man. Like you like say something and it, it, I don't know if you've ever said something complex and or I don't know, requires some level of conceptual thinking or comprehension. And you, you say that to them and they're like, Ha ha, yeah, man. Like, that's an eight-up response because that might be an eight-up individual. Like, but it's, it, contextually, it's a difficult thing to describe. Like, that, that right there. So I was trying to take a sip out of that. It's, it's kind of like almost synonymous with like ditzy. 
Okay. Like that was a ditzy mistake. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, I didn't understand that at first. But yeah, that makes sense. It's it's one of those things that I've learned through context, not through like a concrete definition of yeah. what it actually means. That's so weird. I've never even heard someone say that before. St. Louis. Mm-hmm. St. Louis. I bet I bet Springfield has some expressions. I haven't caught on to them yet, if there are, but anything that's like specific to this city. I don't think so. You know, I heard one the other day. It was uh Oh, what what's the name of it? It was the it was the name of the city. It was like Angel Town. No, that wasn't it. Of Springfield? Yeah. And it wasn't four one seven either. I mean that would just be area code. I don't know. I don't remember neither. I have no idea. Shit. I I know I know the guy upstairs that you just met, he he knows and he made he like does rap, so he yeah. uh, excuse me. He does rap, and he, like, made a song called that, which is why I even know what it's called, but... It's on the trash cans? I have no idea. I don't know, neither. It's just, like, a saying? It's, or? like, it's kind of, like, what Springfield's referred to. It's gonna come to me at the middle of this podcast. We're gonna be talking about, like, panda bears, and then... It's gonna come up. Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, oh, it was this. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about. We'll get back to you. I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. <laughs> I'm just talking shit. It's okay. Happens. Exactly. So let's move on to the next topic. Oh, my Australian friend just messaged me. I c- he said, yeah, I can't wait, mate. <laughs> 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 they, they have, oh, let's, on the topic of expressions, Australian people, oh my God, they have so many, they, they call, um, one of my favorite ones is, we're not here to fuck spiders. That's what Australian people will say. Referring to... So it pretty much means we're not here to fuck around. Like, hey man, would you like to take a shot? Oh mate, we're not here to fuck spiders, <laughs> pull me too. Like, it, like, kind of like, uh, like I'm not here to mess around, let's go. Or like, I love that. should we go in this dark alleyway? Do you say that Because it, it's a shortcut to get to my car. <laughs> hey mate, we're not here to fuck spiders. I've never heard an Australian person talk. Oh, really? I don't think I've ever met someone, like, from Australia. Do you know the nuances between a British accent and an Australian accent or an Irish accent? Mm-mm. It's, I'm really, I'm I'm so terrible at doing a British accent, but Australian's more, like, twangy. It's yeah. more, like, I guess you'd say country. More like, like, I mean, outback, because it is the outback. Uh, yeah. It's, I, I can't even do them, like, side to side. If you hear them side to side, though, uh, English is more proper, typically. Yeah. Australian's more slang they have a lot of different expressions uh but yeah i can't actually do them for you but if you were to hear them you'd be able to tell pretty quickly that they're yeah. different at bare minimum i love that another I hear someone talk yeah right? right they have beautiful accents they really do yeah i mean i've like heard them on tv obviously but never like met someone with an accent they call people blokes that's another. That's what that, like you'd be like, "Hey man, hey dude, hey bloke." What else is another one? Oh, oh, uh, why, why can't I not think of the name of them? They call sandals something. Thongs. They call sandals no, thongs. Don't. Yes. <laughs> oh god. But That's specifically awful. the ones that are like, like an ing- like they they indent inside the, your bigger toe and the toe next to it. Okay. So they call that a thong. They call that a thong. Cool. The more you know, right? Yeah. Learning every day. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, just say, I, don't know, I just think they have funny expressions. Yeah, they do. It makes me want to meet someone, honestly. Make them talk to me. I had two really good Australian friends that had like a significant impact on my life. And I'm actually, I'm going to Europe in... December and I'm going to stay there as long as I can afford to do so and I'll probably end up working to stay there longer yeah uh I don't I don't know how long I'm gonna be there but I'm gonna try to make it a few months yeah uh and they're they're probably part of the reason why I'm even doing that because hanging out with them on a consistent basis for an entire semester was traveling in itself because you're constantly learning in comparison if you're hanging out with somebody who was born and raised in the same hometown and then going to the same school that you went to in college like 
there's just so much more to learn with um, yeah. people from another country. But they're, I don't know. I like Australian culture. They're, they seem to be more laid back overall. They do a lot more traveling, it seems. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more open-minded, at least in comparison. All these things in comparison to the Midwest. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, uh, it's, they're cool people. They're cool people. Do you want to go all over Europe? Ideally speaking, I would like to, yes. Yeah. I would I would love to do so. That'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, like your three main places that you want to go to. Three main? Yeah, oh. like if you could pick, if you could only pick three places. So I'll go first since you asked me, Kay. and then I'm going to rebuttal you with the same question. Is that fair? That's fair. Shit. I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly where, because I'm going off of like what people have said is cool. Some that, ah, that's hard. I just don't know. I've yeah. heard Netherlands is awesome. I've heard Dublin, Ireland's amazing. Yeah. I've heard Portugal's underrated. I've heard Croatia's underrated. Netherlands, I've heard great things about. Um, and then the I think the main two I get keep getting referenced to and recommended is uh, Italy and Spain as well. Oh, yeah. What about you? Where would you go? Well, I actually had, well, my roommate now, she had a foreign exchange student um, back in high school, and she was from Madrid, and so I would want to go there, because I want to see her, because we're still close, and then I want to go to Paris, because that's basic, and mm. like, everyone wants to go see the Eiffel Tower, and then Rome. Okay. It's really bad. I so, like it. Yeah. Like, if I could pick three places, that's where I'd go. It's a hard question. Yeah, it is. Because even, like, af- after naming all that, I'm literally just saying all just of Europe, yeah. but, like, I mean, Greece would be sick. Oh, yeah, definitely. What else? Like, um, Germany, I've heard, is great. Yeah. And they speak a lot of English there. Yeah, true that. Surprisingly. Iceland, I've heard really awesome things about. I've heard that's a really unique place. And then what's that? What's, what are the, um, I forgot what they're, Slovenian countries? It's, like, Denmark, Norway, and... Oh. Sweden and Finland. Yeah, you want to go there? Slovakian? Or is that the Slovakian? Oh no, is that, that's a, that's a country in itself. Yeah, I have no idea. I, they have a Scandinavian, Scandinavian, Scandinavian countries. Those yeah. are those are all grouped together. Those those last that I just named besides yeah. Slovakia. But I don't know. I'm I mean I'm pretty much just naming every country <laughs> in Western Europe. Every place you do, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> you could do like a train and like go through a lot of them though. And, like, aren't flights cheaper there? So you could really, like, fly anywhere. I've heard they're, like, significantly cheaper. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately. That's awesome. Yeah. I want to back... Or what am I saying? I want to I wanna hitchhike while I'm there, too. <laughs> I'm not saying all the time, but I think yeah. I want to do it, like... I don't know. If it's, like, a main highway and I think it's, like, a practical time to try it, I think that'd be cool. But yeah. I hate the idea of standing out there for, like, five hours. So and I think like, it'd be, I'd be doing... I'd stand out there for, like, two or three, but... Yeah. You have to think, too, like, most people take, like public transportation there so I'm, I'm trying to think uh maybe if there's like a spot from i don't know from like germany to italy and it's like a major highway and it's like no stopping towns in between like it's yeah. like a really straight shot there yeah maybe stand off the highway there who knows <laughs> you throw up your phone so you will recognize that you need a ride yeah right <laughs> Would you ever hitchhike? Heck no. That's more scary for a girl, I think, than it is for a guy. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I'm too scared to stay alone at night. I could not hitchhike. There's no way. Uh, that's a good point, because I was driving the other day, and this, this beautiful girl was walking. <laughs> it's like in the middle of the highway. Yeah. She's walking from, like, one side, and then she stopped in the middle, and then she's walking across the other part of the highway, and I'm like... That's so uncommon. Usually you just yeah. see, like, trashy men walking on the <laughs> sidewalk, like, sidewalks, but, like, like old men with long beards or something. But you never see, like, a beautiful woman. I was th- I'm, That was my first thought. I'm like, she's so vulnerable out here. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I was kind of scared for her, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Some people, I feel like some, like, women, they are, I don't know, more independent than others. Like, I'm not, I mean, I'm independent as in, like, I can pay my own bills and do that kind of stuff, but I honestly, if I didn't have two roommates, I I don't even know what I would do. 
I mean, I never had money though, but <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I just I don't think I'd be able to like live on my own yet. What's your reasoning? I don't know. I just I hate being alone. That's fair. That's fair. Like I just hate like coming home and like just being in silence. I guess. Would you say you're more like extroverted or? Or is it like a loneliness variable or? I don't know. I mean, I can be introverted or extroverted. So I feel like, I don't know. Because when I come home from work, like, I, w- I don't know. I have no idea, honestly. Yeah. But that's that's a, that's a, a tough thing. one. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't like to be alone. Yeah, everybody's got their thing. Yeah. I know I noticed that a few years ago myself, and I was like, wow, I'm, like, really uncomfortable being alone. And yeah. then I just went, like, full introvert just to, like, force myself in that situation so I could find comfort in that. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. It was, like, a semester of just solitude. Yeah. Like, intentional solitude. And it was it was uncomfortable at times, but it also made me a lot more comfortable with myself. I don't know. I just couldn't do it. I don't think just like coming home and like never having someone to talk to unless like you invite them over, or, like call them. Mm-hmm. Like I want to come home and like have a conversation or like I don't know, cook dinner. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say because I've lived pretty much alone this summer and it's a lot less convenient because like whenever you got roommates it's pretty cool like they add a lot of value to your life like you'll come home and maybe they have a friend over that you've never met before and then next thing you know you made a friend that night just by going home to your house and the three of you are hanging out playing video games or whatever whatever it may be but i mean that's pretty cool whenever that happens but it's it's a lot more creative whenever you are living alone is what I've noticed. Like you gotta create everything. So yeah. for example, like if you if you wanna go party that night, you gotta create that. You gotta make it happen. It's yeah. all on you. It's not like your roommates are gonna make anything else happen because you don't have any. Yeah. And then also like if you're um, I don't know if you wanna like hang out with just one friend and f- watch a movie. Like you gotta make that happen if you. Yeah. But you also have the flexibility if you want to stay in completely alone and just read a book, then, like, you can make that happen. Yeah. So there's some flexibility, but I I agree with you. It's nice to have somebody to come home to and kick it with for a little bit. I agree. I don't know. I don't think, like, personally, at my age right now, I would be able to live alone. Okay. I just think I'd be uncomfortable. I don't know. Like, coming home alone, like, freaks me out sometimes. You know, like, you walk into, like, a dark place, and you're like, there's someone here. Especially if it's, like, an old house, and you're, like, somewhat questionable if it's, the place is haunted. Yeah. I mean, living downtown, like, I always feel like I'm getting, like, creeped on, so. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just. You could be walking, and some guy sees you there. Maybe he starts, maybe he lives a few doors down, and he keeps seeing you. I yeah, could keep creepy. going with this. I kind of want to keep going with this, but I want to creep you out. You like, can. It's fine. I mean, this dude's like watching you from spray. his window on like Monday morning. He's like, oh, I noticed she left at this time. I yeah. wonder if she works then. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then on Thursday afternoon, he sees you getting home from work. He's like, oh, so she gets home at this time. And then a few weeks pass, she, he starts noticing your schedule a little bit yeah. more. Then he starts prioritizing time to watch you outside his window at 3 30 p.m. because he knows you're gonna be arriving between 3 30 and 3 30 3 45 and then you, one day you arrive at four o'clock and he's like oh i wonder why my girl yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wonder why she uh wonder why she got home at four wonder what she's up yeah, to and then mad. they start getting emotionally attached when they don't even know your first name they just yeah. know your your schedule to some degree yeah, and then they start getting creepy and then they end up at your front door one day and then they're asking for toilet paper, and you, you're a friendly person, so you give them toilet paper, and you are going to be a friendly neighbor and help them out yeah. simply for the sake of altruism. Mm-hmm. And then they start just anonymously showing up at your door at different times, asking for different favors. Yeah. And then you invite them in one day, and then you find out that they just wanted somebody to talk to. Oh. How sweet. <laughs> I love the end of that story. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I just, 
I think it can be creepy. Like, I leave for work sometimes at 5 o'clock in the morning, and, like, there's these this homeless guy that lives. Well, I mean, maybe he's not homeless, but he likes to sleep under our stairs. So, he, like, sleeps under the stairs, and, um, like, when I'm walking down the stairs, he'll, like, peek his head up, and I'm always, like, like trying to run down the stairs so I can get to my car before I get talked to, you know. It's just you have a homeless man that sleeps under your stairs? <laughs> It's, like, he literally keeps a blanket there all day, but then, like, there's, like, food trash, like, around it, and, like, he never moves it. Like, it literally stays exactly how it is. And I'm, 